All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the final shows building up toward NXT TakeOver and WrestleMania. Buckle up, because there's going to be a lot of explaining that I need to do. First off, Cole Lee and EC3 kick off Monday Night Raw. Cole Lee basically tears down Road Killers being this undeserving, or is uh, being held back by an undeserving Hall of Famer. Slim Reaper does come out, although that's not added, and he's and he says he agrees. Doesn't feel like he's earned his ring as a singles competitor, but as a tag team, certainly. He says, but he feels like he he's earned it better by, or he'll earn it better by uh, starting by beating Cole Lee at WrestleMania. I apologize for my slip of wording. Cole laughs and says that he won't fight a mid card champion. Anyone could hold the U.S. title for as long as Slim Reaper did. Colt basically says that the only reason why he hasn't done that is because, well, he hasn't bothered. Colt refuses and leaves with EC3. Now, right afterwards, we have Ace, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring. And he expresses his excitement to be on the main roster. And shakes hands with Sante Guerrero, who welcomes him to Raw backstage. The Undisputed Era, though, show up and taunt both of them. Adam Cole says that Sante is a coward and fears Samuel Armstrong, while Ace is fresh meat about to become roadkill. And, of course, they all chuckle at this joke high-five. And Fish and Strong agree to say that the Golden Sins died while the UE thrives. I mean, sure. Sante and Ace point out that the UE hasn't done much since Kyle left, and Roderick Strong takes offense to this and vows that he'll rearrange their faces tonight. Ace accepts, and Sante offers to be the partner with him for old time's sake, as a one night only thing to help welcome his longtime buddy on the roster. Because, as you can tell, Ace and Alex Carter never really had much beef with Sante Guerrero. The beef was between Ace and Bruce Bennett in that faction. Regardless, ladies and gentlemen, we kick off the show. Blake Daniels and Kevin Owens defend the Raw Tag Team titles against Assassin and MK. MK and Assassin earning those uh, the opportunity. But unfortunately, Blake Daniels and Kevin Owens retain the titles. Afterwards, Jamie and Champa come out, Project Chaos, and they announce they challenge the team of Blake Daniels and Kevin Owens for the titles at WrestleMania. Blake Daniels vows to defeat Jamie once again in his career, but this time at WrestleMania, it'll be in a tag team match. But the lights then go out, and Aleister Black appears behind everyone in the announced table. He points to the WrestleMania sign, and Kevin Owens takes the microphone and, and rejects the offer, saying that Black has no right. However, Daniels takes the microphone and says that, you know what, he'll allow it to personally give Black a beating for his attack and humiliating him and his partner last role. And to get this whole shenanigans out of the way, find your partner, whoever it is, Bray Wyatt or maybe that other guy. Find whoever and meet them at WrestleMania. So, triple threat match. Triple threat tag team match for the Raw Tag Team Titles at WrestleMania. Following that, we have Pete Dunne officially revealing his mystery partner. It is Killian Dane, the Scottish psychopath, as Wade Barrett is their manager. And they fight the revival in an open challenge. And Killian Dane picks up the pin and the win. Afterwards, Wade Barrett expresses that this new team will destroy everyone in, the, in their path, and they may not have a match at WrestleMania, but next season will be their year, or their season. Afterwards, Blake Daniels and Kevin Owens head in the locker room to grab their gear, and when they open up the door, there's a rocking chair with a lantern in the center of it, with the lights out and a, one singular light shining down on it. The faint sound of laughter echoes as Blink Daniel slams the door shut. Kevin Owen asks if they should enter, and Blink Daniel says, No way. He's seen way too many horror films to know better. And is not going to fall for that trap. And leaves. 
Smart plan. Afterwards, we have the new hardcore champion, Bobby Lashley, defending his title against Samoa Joe, Mr. Money in the Bank of Raw, Adam Cole, and Roman Reigns. Bobby Lashley manages to pick up the win and retain his title. Afterwards, Lashley vows to be a dominant champion who will hold the belt for a long time. Everyone always makes that promise, but with how he performed at the Elimination Chamber and how he performed on Raw, I don't know. Potentially, he could. what he's saying could be true. We'll have to see. After that, Adam Cole heads backstage and is asked in an interview when he will cash in. And he refuses to answer that question, saying he'll pick his moment carefully, and he won't just reveal his cards like that. He'll pick and choose his battles, and right now, tonight, isn't the best of times. He's trying to be a supportive team member. Then, ladies and gentlemen, Triple H, the chairman of the company, is stands in the ring and informs everyone that he's decided that Colt Lee will face Slim Reaper on the pre-show of WrestleMania. Colt Lee comes out and says absolutely not. He disagrees. But Triple H offers up a stipulation. The winner will be added to the United States title match on the main show. Colt Lee agrees with this, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It turns into chaos. Randy Orton, the United States champion, and the Rated R superstar Edge both come out. Shockingly, they're able to coexist next to each other. They both argue that they deserve a fair one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania. Triple H compromises and makes the main event a two-versus-two-versus-two versus two versus two match. Now, you might be wondering why. Triple H explains... That if Edge and Orton win their match, or win the match in the main event, they get their one-on-one -on -one match. However, if the Hitmen re win the match, they keep their spots on the show. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. They get what they want. Rogue Killer isn't removed from the match at WrestleMania. If EC3 and Cole Lee win, well, guess what? Rogue Killer is pulled from the main event or the semi-main event of WrestleMania, and they get to choose who, what, whatever opponent they want for EC3 at WrestleMania. So the stipulation for each of the teams is on the line. And you know, if Orton and Edge don't win, then the only negative is that it won't be a one-on-one -on -one match anymore. Now, the question will be who will win the match. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the semi-main event, it is Ace and Sante Guerrero teaming up. One night only, an old alliance renewed. The Golden Sins are two out of the four members. Meet in the ring to battle Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong, and Ace picks up the victory by pinning Bobby Fish. Afterwards, Ace vacates the ring for Sante Guerrero, who says that he has something to address and get off his chest. Sante takes the microphone and cuts a promo on Armstrong. He basically says how arms, everything that he said is true. Armstrong is only here because he has the streak. He's a watered-down old version of himself, and he doesn't want to fight him for the streak. Sante is far more accomplished than that. He doesn't need the streak to validate his career, for he's already dominant. He's been on a nuclear rise, and it's only a matter of time before he gets the belt back. And he verifies, or he reaffirms that everything he said previously were Armstrong is not the man who made that title. The Universal Championship relevant. Everything he said is true. He's nothing but an old man. And he said, and if it comes to it, maybe he should take the streak only to put down and give Armstrong the ending that he's going to ultimately have. The lights go out. And Armstrong appears and stares down Sante Guerrero.
So this pro and this is the tail end of the promo as Armstrong speaks. You may say that you don't want to conquer the streak, but I can see it in your eyes, and they say something else. They gleam at the thought of it. Deep down, you're drawn to my streak. You want to be the one to end it. Unfortunately for you, the streak has been pursued with people that have that same gleam. But I've always snuffed that light out. I'm the man that didn't build the universal title. Young bucks like you need a lesson in history and respect. I'm the man that made this locker room experience true fear. I'm the man people dread to face because they know they'll feel nothing but eternal pain when they step in the ring with me. I am older than I used to be, but I am not that old. I am no fossil. My dominance may be faded in a legend, but your words sound like a challenge deeper than WrestleMania. My mind is now made up. If you fight me at WrestleMania, You'll be just a stepping stone for my return into that world of dominance. My legend will be reignited as my quest will return to become world champion. Sante replies, Hey Armstrong, stop looking past me and look into my eyes. I'm more than just preaching arrogance. I'm speaking truth when I say that I've had the best run in the history of this series. I went from debuting by attacking Ricochet and being the most talked about thing in NXT. I reinvigorated NXT. And after that, I became NXT Champion. North American Champion. Not only that, I, when I went to the main roster, what did I do? Oh, that's right, I won the briefcase of Money in the Bank. I cashed in and became world champion and held the title longer than you did in a single run. You might have had the title longer than me, but at the end of the day, I am a better champion than you ever were. I built that title. I also held the U.S. title twice. I've had nothing but dominance. I'm bulletproof right now. Beating you will be a cakewalk. And for anybody who doesn't believe that, they're living in a dream world. They're living in a fantasy. I am the one that is most qualified because I've been on a nuclear rise. You can't stop me. For the first time in a long time, you're the one who's got something to prove. I don't. And I've got no problem putting you in your place before I take back what is mine. And that's the Universal Championship. I'm the guy in your nightmares that you dread. I'm the guy you refer to as the one who is destined to beat you. I'm the conqueror destined to be the one in seven in one. Your time is up, old man. Armstrong replies. That is where you're wrong, Sante. Like the others, you claim you'll beat me. However, like all the others, you're not the one that shall beat me. You're not the one destined to conquer me. And you're not the one in my dreams. You're not the one predetermined to slay the streak. The streak against you will survive. I will collect another name, and you will feel my rage. And I am not looking past you. I am just simply looking through you. And maybe that eats you up inside. <laughs> Sante laughs. Oh, it doesn't eat me up at all. But if you find your edge and your balls and bring them to WrestleMania, then I'll bring every ounce of energy I have. Just remember, Reaper, you won this match, and I'll give you the end you see, and your streak will be mine. And I'll forever be known as more than just the diamond of universe mode, the franchise of this series. I'll be the immortal Sante Guerrero because your defeat will be immortalized in everyone's memories. That's a fact. So 
with a promo over. Armstrong then immediately drops the mic and goes for a spear. However, Sante leaps right over him smoothly. As Armstrong hits the ropes, Sante rolls out the other end in a beautiful display of agility. And then wags his finger saying, at WrestleMania, your legacy will die by my hand. Backstage, Ace cuts a promo. And he says... And he misses NXT, but looks forward to the next stage in his life. He's eager to make an impact. Triple H walks up and informs him, Well, you've got an opportunity to shine at WrestleMania in the Hardcore Championship title match, as he's adding Ace into it. Ace thanks him for the opportunity. Then Ace gets kicked in the back of the head by Adam Cole, who informs him that he's in the match at WrestleMania and will be and, and will humble the newly joining member of the roster. Triple H pushes Cole away, who leaves as Triple H assists Ace. Then we're on to the main events. EC3 and Cole Lee versus Rogue Killer and Slim Reaper versus Randy Orton and Edge. Everyone's got some stakes invested into this match, but unfortunately for two teams, they fail. And Rogue Killer is the one who gets the pin, pinning Coley in the center of the ring, not EC3. So this means Slim Reaper and Coley will be contested on the pre-show of WrestleMania, and the winner will join the United States champion and his challenger, Edge, at on the main show of WrestleMania. Also, Rogue Killer will re remain in contention for the Universal Championship. As that closes out Monday Night Raw, we head to SmackDown. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to SmackDown Live. We kick off with Scott Cole entering the office of Tyler Wolf. Remember, he was attacked at the Elimination Chamber. And the OC is there as he asks for a WWE title match tonight because he never got it when he got hurt and attacked. AJ Styles snaps at him and tells him to get in line. Tyler Wolf agrees to this. Scott Cole then asks if he can beat down AJ Styles instead. However, AJ refuses and says that he's got a bigger fish to fry, like Prince Metallico. Scott Cole also points out that, you know, he beat Prince Metallico to retain his NXT championship, and AJ Styles said it doesn't matter. Prince has become a bigger star than Scott Cole. Instead, AJ Styles offers up Jack McKay. Scott Cole says he isn't interested, but Tyler Wolf offers that if Scott Cole beats Jack McKay, then he'll be guaranteed a world title match in Season 9 for whatever brand he is drafted to. He'll even have it in writing from Triple H. Scott Cole then reluctantly agrees, and so does Jack, who seems to hesitate for a moment. After he leaves, oh wait, after he leaves, AJ Styles offers double Jack's rate if he takes out Scott Cole. Jack McKay hesitates for a few seconds, which catches AJ's attention, but then he shrugs it off and agrees to destroy him. So then we go to the Hardcore Championship match. Bobby Lashley defends it against Mustafa Ali, Cedric Alexander, and Aiden English. However, Bobby Lashley retains. After the fact, Lashley claims that he will dominate the competition at WrestleMania, regardless if it's an upcomer like Ace or a veteran in the game. Afterwards, Cesaro and Cassius Ono ask Tyler Wolf if they can have, or if they can get into the SmackDown Tag Team title match at WrestleMania. Tyler Wolf agrees, but as long as Cesaro beats Max Webb. If Max Webb wins, he gets added to the Intercontinental Championship match at WrestleMania. So, there's his way of trying to incentivize both men. However, Cesaro doesn't like that exactly. He goads Max Webb into waging his job in the company as well because Max Webb got called into the office and Max Webb agrees to this. If Max Webb loses, he has to also quit and miss WrestleMania. So with that on the line, Max Webb versus Cesaro. Next. 
So after a brutal back and forth between the two men, Cesaro picks up the win, which means that Max Webb has to quit the company. He says it right afterwards, and Ono taunts him as Max Webb limps up the ramp, now quitting the company. Max Webb goes backstage, and an interviewer catches him. He promises that this is just another roadblock for him, and he will return stronger and better than ever one day. Tyler then Tyler Wolf then calls Prince Metallico into his office where the old where the whole OC is just residing. It's like AJ lives f uh, with free rent in the SmackDown general manager's office this season. But Prince stares them all down, and Tyler asks why Prince Metallica wants AJ Styles. Prince explains he understands the rules of the briefcase, but he wants to prove that he can beat the greatest WWE champion ever. Tyler Wolf adds that if they want a match, they both have to wager something at WrestleMania. AJ decides to offer up his rematch clause for the world title. If he loses, he has to start back at the bottom. But Prince Metallico then offers up his mask and identity. If he loses, he has to remove his mask for the rest of his career. However, he will only accept the match terms if he gets to fight Bobby Roode tonight for the attack at Elimination Chamber. Tyler Wolf agrees to this. So next up, we have Prince Metallico versus Bobby Roode in a one-on-one -on -one match, and Prince Metallico picks up the win. Congratulations to him as he looks forward to the match against AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Afterwards, Triple H, the chairman of WWE, walks into the office and orders Tyler Wolf to the ring. They stand in the ring, and he and introduces Kyle O'Reilly, who stands on the ramp. Triple H says the games need to end. Tyler has now shown consistently clear bias toward the other members of the rosters and against, you know, others as well outside of Kyle O'Reilly. He orders this match will be settled at WrestleMania. Tyler Wolf refuses and says that he's retired. He's a Hall of Famer. He shouldn't be stepping into the ring. He doesn't want to tarnish his legacy. Triple H said it doesn't matter if he sucks in the ring. What Tyler Wolf has consistently done over and over needs to stop. And Triple H threatens him by saying that he will fire Tyler Wolf personally if he refuses him again. Kyle O'Reilly agrees to the match as well as long as it's an Extreme Rules match. Tyler hesitates but agrees to the stipulation while vowing to walk into WrestleMania as the King once more for one night only. And will be sure to put Kyle O'Reilly in his humble place and remind him that he is nothing more than a mid-card champion. Afterwards, ladies and gentlemen, we have a two-on-two -two match. Drew McIntyre and Alex Carter teaming up against D.I.S. And, of course, D.I.S. are the former SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And if Drew and Alex Carter win, let's just say they look very good in terms of having a favorite of contend for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. We actually go to that match next. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the semi-main event of SmackDown Live. As here comes the team of Alex Carter and the Scottish psychopath Drew McIntyre. As they are in the hopes that if they defeat D.I.S. tonight, they could be added to the... SmackDown Tag Team title match at WrestleMania. Bold, interesting philosophy. And to be fair, DIS does have a rematch clause. So they have a fair claim here, but here we go. Drew and Alex Carter, the British Invasion and the Scottish Psychopath, teaming up once again an alliance that is slowly formed over the course of this season and has resulted to a potential opportunity if they win tonight for the titles in the future as Drew McIntyre is a one-time world champion in universe mode history and former money in the bank winner and for Alex Carter he's a former cruiserweight champion 
North American champion and NXT Tag Team champion in his career. Both these men are decorated in their own ways. But both men want one thing, and that's to be the top dogs of the NXT Tag Team or SmackDown Tag Team Division. Excuse me, but they have to go through arguably the faces of SmackDown's Tag Team Division for at least four seasons. Ladies and gentlemen, D.I. Yes! Daniel Bryan and Johnny Gargano making their way to the ring. They have been the pinnacle, the status quo of tag team wrestling in universe mode for quite some time. They are also the longest reigning SmackDown tag team champions in universe mode history at 57 episodes. Johnny Gargano at six SmackDown tag team title reigns. Daniel Bryan at eight or at six as well, but eight when you count his two Raw Tag Team title reigns. Johnny Gargano, also a former WWE Champion, NXT Tag Team Champion, and NXT Champion in Universe Mode history, as well as a former Mr. Money in the Bank. Both these men highly decorated, and here we go. Johnny Gargano and Alex Carter clashing in the ring. Alex Carter, a former member of the Golden Sins, an NXT faction that rejuvenated his career. And also, of course, spent time with Luch Luther Richards in the British Invasion early on in his career. Johnny Gargano, Irish whipping Alex Carter in his corner. Tag made. Drop down here and oh, the double super kick to the jaw as Alex Carter goes down. Carter and Drew trying to move up the platform, or at least trying to get some form of momentum before the conclusion of this season to ensure that they have an opportunity at titles or at least a chance of being on the main show of WrestleMania. Alex Carter, of course, was in the semi-main event of last WrestleMania against his good friend, Sante Guerrero, where they fought for the Universal title in a very good match. However... Right now, their future remains uncertain. Alex Carter, though, counters Daniel Bryan, trying to avoid being taken out of the corner. Takes out his knee. Look at that. It's a Panama Sunrise. Oh, out of the corner. Takes out Daniel Bryan. And Johnny Gargano got wiped out there. Alex Carter wasting no time, bouncing off the ropes. Oh, a painter there. Tag made over the Scottish Psychopath. Drew McIntyre looking for the knife that shot blocked by Daniel Bryan. Bryan now has got him as the American Dragon. With a kick to the back, no wait. McIntyre got right up, big boot there. Dropping down Daniel Bryan. Now an accidental there. Drew McIntyre and Johnny Gargano, both one time world champions in universe mode. Slams him down and Drew McIntyre rolls him over. They're also the only two men in this ring who have held the NXT title. A fun fact for you there. Drew McIntyre eats the kick to the back. Daniel Bryan eats an knife edge shot there. Drew McIntyre, oh wait, is caught. Tossed into the corner. Daniel Bryan, oh, gets tied up into the ropes. Drew McIntyre twists his wrist and no, forearm to the face by Daniel Bryan. Bryan, oh wait. Drew McIntyre sucking him in and drives the knee right into the spinal cord of Daniel Bryan before once again going over to the Boston Crab. Trying to wear down the back of Daniel Bryan tonight. As a Daniel Bryan chant breaks out to rally him, hopefully. Tag made. Johnny Gargano spinning you kick there. Grabs him in the headlock, no. Drew, bats that away, big boot again this time, it's the Johnny Gargano. And the powerhouse of the team, doing what he does best, and a sit down power bomb to Johnny Wrestling, one, no. Kick out before the count of one. It's right now, the War Raiders are the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and are on a tear, trying to build momentum toward WrestleMania. And this team, DIS, the team that they took the titles from, and Mayhem is trying to get some added momentum as well. Step up a cut there. Drew goes down. 
Johnny wrestling now, twists the arm. Oh, and is using the other one to peel it back there. Contorting it in pain. As now, Johnny wrestling, tossing him into the corner again. No way, Drew counters him. No way, Johnny wrestling again, sides him up with another uppercut. And now, Drew trying to get to this corner, but no. Gargano continues to step him away. Drew with a close line there. And Alex Carter asking for the tag. Drew sending Gargano into the corner. No. Once again, Gargano denying him. Drew attacking Gargano. Pulls on there. And now a tag made over to Alex Carter, who is now the legal man. Bouncing off the ropes, leaping elbow, connecting onto the shoulder. Attacking the arm. Oh, and a light drop there. Cover to put him away. Four, two. Kick out at two near fall. So we have a near fall. As now. Oh, wait, Alex Carter has got him in a submission. Ankle lock here. The ankle lock and force him in a tap. No way, Gargano using his agility there. Managing to work his way out of it. Oh, wait, Alex Carter about to go for a ride. Snap suplex. Oh, wait, got behind him. What a counter. Oh, it's a counter. As Daniel Bryan and Johnny Gargano proving tonight why they are so damn good. As his reflexes are on point. Plots him down. Picking up Alex Carter now. Here we comes Johnny Gargano. No. Tied up there. Irish whipped. Alex Carter brings it back inside. Oh, kick to the top of the head. Alex Carter is stunned. Rocked. Irish whipped into the corner. And now, here it comes. Made in the middle, perhaps. Oh, wait, Daniel Bryan. Oh, wait. Gets tied up by Drew McIntyre. Oh, McIntyre plants him down. And now looking to take out Johnny Wrestling. Oh! Daniel Bryan, oh wait, it's gone! Oh, future shock! DDT, cover to get the win! One, two, no! Daniel Bryan stays alive! Alex Carter gonna waste no time! Scoreboard, Plex, Connex, cover! One, two, no! Daniel Bryan kicked out again! As Alex Carter still trying to shake off the, the effects of the meat in the middle. When Daniel Bryan and Johnny Gargano landed those brutal kicks and strikes. And now Alex Carter returning the favor. Proving why he is the British invasion. And why he is a brute despite his size and stature. Twist the leg. Oh, leg dropped there to Daniel Bryan's leg. Drags him into the middle of the ring. Here it comes another leg drop there. Across the throat. And now Daniel Bryan being picked up. Wait, no uppercut there. Oh, wait, looks for it. No. Looking for the back elbow. No, wait, back and forth. Toss him into the corner. Daniel Bryan makes the tag. What's he thinking here? Irish whipping him. Oh, it's on a drop. Runs right into the big boot there. And now Johnny Gargano gets fired up here. Take down once, twice. Here it comes, oh, wait, no! Alex Carter shuts that train down. And now Alex Carter rolls him up, cover, to put him away, one, two, no, one and a half. Johnny Gargano stunned, oh, wait, scoreboard rolls him up, one, two, no, kick out at two. And oh wait, Alex Carter goes down. Johnny Gargano has a moment to recover here. Now I'm caught up with a snapmare. So on the headlock, just trying to make him go through all the motions. Alex Carter caught him. Oh wait, here it comes the head spring backflip now. Out of the corner. One, two, no, kick out at two. Alex Carter just showing off at that point. And a drop kick to the back of the head. Alex Carter taunting away. Doesn't even realize Daniel Bryan was tagged in. 
Oh, wait, Drew McIntyre missed the close line. He had full view of it, and now Daniel Bryan drops down Drew. The yes kicks are in effect. And tags him into the side of the head. And now Daniel Bryan with a cover here to put him away. One no. Alex Garner made a beautiful leap and oh, a take down there. And oh, Alex Garner ascends the ropes. Oh wait, Daniel Bryan. Yes, lock. Yes, lock. No. Doesn't even realize an electric tear. Oh. Fall away slam right there. Of sorts. Might not be the exact name. And oh, tip up there by Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan ties him up. DDT connecting. As these men are on fire, Drew McIntyre is covered. No. Kick out there. The referee still cannot hit a three. Drew McIntyre hit with a stiff shot there. Irish whipped into the corner. Daniel Bryan, here it comes. Oh, wait, Drew McIntyre. Ira sweats him. No. Daniel Bryan with a beautiful counter. Ducks it there. Oh, wait. Drew dodged it. Sizes him up. Here comes the suplex. Oh. No pain, no gain. And he's gaining a lot of experience here as Drew picks him up. Drives him into the canvas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, all rise for the Claymore. Here we go, bang! Cover! One, two, three, Drew! And Alex Carter have done it! They have picked up the win here on SmackDown Live! And have an argument to be at WrestleMania for the tag team titles! Wow. What a match between these four men as they put on a clinic tonight. But unfortunately for DIS, they are on the losing end as this team is on a roll. And proved it right here tonight by pinning the former SmackDown Tag Team Champions. As they celebrate their win. Here in the semi-main event. In the main event though. The Intercontinental Champion defends his title. Stay tuned. So after the match, ladies and gentlemen, Triple H is confronted by Drew McIntyre and Alex Carter, who demand to be added to the SmackDown Tag Team title match at WrestleMania. However, Triple H compromises and says that he'll offer them a guaranteed title shot for the belts at Extreme Rules in Season 9, the first pay-per-view, and they agree. Afterwards, Class Parr is seen, the leader of the Dynasty and Intercontinental Champion, heading backstage in the locker room before his match to find... Davis King. He asks Davis King if he can reach out to Mac King for him, his brother. Davis rejects this and then asks if Classpar just thinks that Davis is just a messenger or sidekick to Mac King. Classpar denies this and just says that he wants to resolve the tension between him and Matt. But Davis ignores him and highlights that Classpar might carry himself differently now, but he was more than just a brick in the ring. Even when Davis was a world champion, Class Par looked down upon him. Spread rumors about him as a shadow to Matt King as well. Davis agrees that he will never reach the same height as Matt, his brother. But he isn't trying to be him. Class Par has burned more than just a bridge with his brother and challenges Class Par for the Intercontinental Championship tonight. Class Par hesitates and that fires up Davis even more. Davis says that he might not be the best performer, but he will not stand by and let all the mockery of the past stand. Class Par then accepts, saying that hopefully it will bring Davis closure. 
So we head to the main event. Class Bar sporting a little bit of a lo different look versus Davis King for the Intercontinental Championship. If Class Bar loses, his career ends. And after a long back and forth battle, Davis King. Loses the match to Claspar, the Intercontinental Champion retains his title. Claspar then, after the match, offers out his hand to Davis, who just rolls out of the ring. Claspar heads backstage and is congratulated by Aiden and Austin Arrogance. But Ryan Trapp hesitates. He says that all the pressure is on him for NXT. Claspar assures him that Ryan is strong-willed and has the fortitude to overcome the odds. Ryan smiles to that, and the whole faction leaves, I, although they are missing uh, Noam Dar out on injury. Now, to close out the show, Triple H announces, bear with me here because there's a lot going on in terms of description, and I know that I don't have the photo for it. So, or any kind of footage or promo, but it's a long description. Triple H announces that James Arlington... Announces James Arlington to the ring, and then announces that Kevin Draco is incoming despite wanting to be here. To protect both the competitors in the main event of WrestleMania, the host of WrestleMania Season 8 will represent Kevin Draco for the signing. And that is... Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Matt King, the Hall of Famer, returning after a season-long absence since retiring at the end of Season 7. Immediately, Arlington wastes no time ripping into Matt King, who warns him not to hype up, and who then in turn tells him not to hype up a rematch that the world will never get. Matt is rooted in just signing the contract and the terms for Draco and then leaving. However, Arlington continues to insult him. Matt points out that Arlington might be uh, fearing, or might be afraid, and assures him that he felt the same way. He was worried of being a disappointment to, pe to the people who loved him, and letting so many people down when it came to the main event of WrestleMania. Arlington, like Draco, has something to prove to themselves and the fans. Arlington then tells Matt that he won't ever step between the ropes. If he won't ever step between the ropes, then he should go back to being a good little husband who works a desk job. Matt assures him that he's content in life, and Arlington just wants to draw out a possible last match to avenge his loss at WrestleMania Season 6. Matt then signs the contract for Kevin Draco, and then Arlington flips the table on a Matt King and then assaults Triple H, who managed to roll out of the ring. He then gets a chair from another ring and smashes Matt King's leg several times. He tells Draco into the camera that Matt King is an example of what he will do to him at WrestleMania. He then hooks the arms to hit his finisher, the fall from grace on Matt King. But Kevin Draco leaps through the crowd as he had... <laughs> As he had to, sorry, as he had to fight from the back to get hit there. So he storms through the ramp, or the chaotic crowd. And Draco and Arlington begin to brawl, and the locker room floods out. Matt King gets help from Davis, and they weed through the chaos. As Draco and Arlington are being pulled apart. The two men get pulled apart and put in the opposite corners. And then Class Bar, who came out of the ring, races through the bodies of security pouring out from the locker room as well, and he goes to the back where a camera is following him, and he looks around for Davis and Matt King and yells for Matt, who isn't there anymore, as the show comes to a close. That is SmackDown, pure chaos, as the main event of WrestleMania heats up. And so do plenty more matches. Pure chaos. And I love it. As SmackDown ends.
A key detail that I want to add before this promo, just because I forgot to mention it in the video, or continuing, is that when they get in the ring, the masked guy kind of sits in the back in the corner with his head down. Meanwhile, the big man stands in the ring, hands behind the back. The female kind of like snakes her arm around, kind of like hugging him. While David Perez, the leader of the faction, stands in the foreground delivering the promo. Just wanted to add those details because I forgot to mention them in the continue or the video continuing, but it can go a long way in terms of adding details to the characters that I would have mentioned in the promo. So ladies and gentlemen, you've officially been introduced to David Perez, the leader of the high society as they kick off the show. Perez on the microphone says that he wants to make it clear they won't reveal all of their cards just yet, but all he's here to say tonight is that NXT is theirs already. They just lack the gold to validate that statement to everyone. To him, it's made clear. You know what they're there for, and that's to take over NXT. No sense in talking about it further. They're there to claim championships. Difference is, they feel that they are already running NXT. Actions speak louder than words, in my opinion, but nonetheless, the show carries on. As High Society makes their debut, that is the only name we get. David Perez, the leader. We don't get any introduction to the woman and the two males that are accompanying him. Afterwards, ladies and gentlemen, we have Ty Noble making an appearance alongside Paul Heyman with the BCW World Championship on his shoulder, and he defends it in an open challenge against Tucker Knights. So once he retains, afterwards Paul Heyman takes the microphone and states that the BCW title is the most prestigious championship in wrestling and Ty is the new standard bearer, the benchmark of wrestling. And they will watch NXT TakeOver with great interest. Following that, we have Tokunaga, who was taken out by Tyson Cage backstage and is unable to compete. So Mr. Samuel announces a replacement for the Cruiserweight title match later tonight. Following that, we have the finals. Or sorry, not the finals, but the other half of the final four for the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. You have Johnny Rivers and Mike Kanellis versus Bruce Bennett and Mar er Bruce, ah, not Bruce Bennett, Jacob Knox and Jackson Wolf, who is the North American champion. These two teams clash, and the Dynasty pick up the win, meaning they will head to the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Finals against Shelton Benjamin and Tyson Cage. However, keep this in mind, Dax Devonair appears on the big screen and says that he challenges Johnny Rivers to a match at NXT TakeOver. And Johnny Rivers accepts, saying that he will avenge the loss of Mike Kanellis from the previous NXT show. After that, as well, Leo Rush, Ice, and Cage, and Shelton Benjamin come out, and they promise that Knox and Wolf and the Regime won't survive the finals. They will go on to beat the Regime's Tag Team and be the first NXT Champions to win the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Afterwards, ladies and gentlemen, you have Alice York versus Maria, and the winner will be added to the NXT Women's Idol match per a stipulation that Marcus Trapp put in place. And after a brutal back-and-forth match, Alice York picks up the win. De Devin Walker, her boyfriend, helps her backstage, and Marcus Trapp walks up and says that Devin should apologize to his girlfriend because he's a he's to blame for all the beatdowns. Because Marcus has been the one who has been hiring Shayna Baszler among and uh, Maria to be laying her out constantly. 
as Devin gets frustrated and is about to start attacking Marcus. Marcus says that he, if he doesn't comply to help him, then he'll have to pull some strings in management to have Alice York fired, or let's just say she won't get her title opportunity at NXT TakeOver. All Devin has to do is follow his orders any time Marcus ever asks for it. Devin basically th says that, let's put it this way, you're about to lose your power if you lose tonight. So why should I listen to you? Fair point, Marcus says. However, he still has connections in NXT and the whole company. So make no mistake, through hell or high water, he will find ways to take out either of them. And he wants Devin Walker to do anything he asks whenever he wants. So, you will do what he, what he wants or else. So Devin says, or asks what he wants him to do. Marcus throws his armor on his shoulder and he said, I'm glad you asked. Follow me. After hesitating, you know. After that, we have Rey Mysterio, the new cruiserweight champion, defending his title against Kalisto, who subbed in for Tokunaga. And he will manage to retain his championship. Congrats to Rey Mysterio. But Leo Rush comes out and vows that Rey Mysterio is on borrowed time. Rush, however, is going to focus on the other titles at NXT TakeOver. But he's coming for the Cruiserweight Championship shortly in time after WrestleMania. Rey Mysterio welcomes the challenge and tells Leo Rush to name the time and place. Afterwards as well, Marcus is called into the office and Mr. Samuel informs him that the North American Championship will be defended in a multi-man match of his choosing for opponents. Marcus protests, but Mr. Samuel shows him the signed document from Triple H. Mr. Samuel also, also wishes Marcus and the regime the best of luck because this could be the last time he ever has control in NXT. Marcus gets mad and says that the chair Mr. Samuel sits in will soon be his. And in the main event, you have Ryan Schrapp representing the Dynasty versus Bruce Bennett, who represents the regime. The two representatives with all the stipulations up for grabs. And I tried to record this match, but nothing was really turning out too well. But I'll put it to you this way. Ryan Schrapp basically lays out Bruce Bennett after a long, brutal match back and forth. And then, lo and behold, Marcus... And the regime stand on the entrance way as their theme music hits. Ryan turns around to go look at them. As he's distracted, Bruce Bennett goes for the roll-up in. One, two, kick out. As soon as he gets up, he's hit with death row. The finisher of Bruce Bennett. Bruce Bennett goes for the cover. One, two, kick out at two. The regime slowly descends down toward the ring. And go to circle it. All the men are standing on the entrance ramp, and then... <sighs> oh my gosh! What? No way! Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jack McKay! He's returning! Oh my gosh! The cavalry has arrived for one of these two factions! Who's he gonna side with? Oh man! The former NXT champion, one of the most dominant wrestlers in this company, has arrived! The game changer! As a to be shifted. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is Jack McKay as he walks to the ring with the theme song blaring. The regime, one by one, run up to attack him and stop him, but he steamrolls through each and every one of them before decking Marcus Trapp. Bruce Bennett is dazed and confused as the war continued inside the ring, as both he and Ryan Trapp laid each other out with a double clothesline, but as Bruce Bennett starts to ascend the ropes, that is closest to the entrance ramp, Jack McKay gets a kendo stick and cracks him upside the head with it. Bruce Bennett staggers back, turns right around, and Marcus, or sorry, Ryan Trapp connects 
with the Panama Sunrise, or sorry, Canadian Destroyer, and then goes into the corner and lands the punt kick. As, of course, the regime starts to regroup, Jack McKay holds down the ring, and then the Dynasty show up on the entrance ramp behind them, boxing them in. Ryan Trapp goes for the cover. One, two, three. As he defeats Bruce Bennett, the regime has fallen, and the Dynasty win their stipulations. As Marcus looks on and falls to his knees, looking absolutely livid. Ryan Trapp crawls and pulls himself up the ropes, pointing at his father, and Marcus is absolutely enraged as the show ends. And then that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the build-up toward NXT TakeOver and WrestleMania. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'd love to get your opinions. But next up, I'm about to show you all the championship episodes and reigns, but that will do it, and get ready because those three shows coming up will be live streamed or recorded, so keep your ears to the ground and stay tuned because I'm excited for these shows, and I hope they deliver on your excitement. So as promised, ladies and gentlemen, to close out the video here are your champions heading into the go home show for wrestlemania weekend you've got the universal champion randy orton all these title reigns on the episode count as you can see on the right for all these names are the active reign they are currently at not a combined but the active reign that they have going on right now the two times the one time is the reign that they're on currently now, with that said, we will see who emerges out of these shows as the champions. I apologize for the long wait. I've been busy. I still am kind of busy, but luckily this was over a long period of time that I was able to get all this together and finally post this for everyone. Once my schedule frees up, I'll be sure to try to stream or record the three shows. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel, of course, if you choose. But most importantly, as always, pseudo Matt Army. I'll see you all in the next video.